5 minute guide to warplanes the hawker hunter this is the prototype of the hawker hunter a great export success in the jet age for a company most famous for the hurricane fighter of world war ii the hunter was the raf's main frontline fighter for a time one of the uk's first supersonic aircraft and still seems to have been in service with the lebanese air force as recently as 2008 the Hunter's lineage can be traced all the way back to this aircraft, the Hawker Sea Fury. However, the Hunter's story really begins with the Hawker Sea Hawk, developed from the fuselage of the Fury, with new wings, tricycle undercarriage, and a modified tail. The prototype was ordered in 1945, intended for the RAF as the Hawk, however with the end of the war the RAF was pursuing other fighter designs. Hawkers were stuck between a rock and a hard place, their piston fighter sails were drying up. The RAF had the Gloucester Meteor, which it thought would be the best thing ever, and so they were left with no choice but to modify the Hawk rapidly for the Royal Navy's fleet air arm. While production of the Sea Hawk was ongoing, Sidney Cam was working with his team on a number of derivative aircraft of the type. The first was the P 1052. This aircraft featured the fuselage and tail of the Sea Hawk, with its distinctive wing mounted intake and exhaust, but the outer portions of the wing were swept back. After the P 1052 came the P 1081. This aircraft is really starting to show the lines of the Hunter. The old Rolls Royce Neen engine was replaced with a more powerful Rolls Royce A. This allowed the straight tailpipe to be fitted to the aircraft. At the same time the tail was swept back in the same manner as the wings. This design was submitted for a competition in Australia for a new fighter, but it became apparent that the design would not be finished in time so development was stopped. This brings us back to the first aircraft featured WB-188. This is roughly what the Hawker P-1067 would have looked like on its first flight in 1951. Detailed design had begun in 1948, around the same time that the P-1052 and P-1081 had first flown, and the aircraft obviously used a lot of knowledge of those that came before it with the split intake and single tail of the P-1081. However, the big difference was that it used the new Rolls-Royce Avon or Armstrong Siddeley Sapphire axial flow engines. While the aircraft was still on the drawing board the RAF's need for new fighter jets after the Meteor's somewhat poor performance became pressing and an order for 400 of the aircraft were placed before the prototype had even flown. The Hunter had a relatively troubled early development, with the Avon engine being prone to compressor stalls, the air brakes causing a severe pitch down, and the four large 30mm cannons causing issues with both gun gas and the spent links bouncing off the bottom of the fuselage and damaging the aircraft. This led to link catches being fitted. In true RAF fashion they were promptly named Sabrinas, after a famous well-endowed celebrity of the time. Before the first versions of the Hunter entered service the first prototype was converted to the only F-3 aircraft. This had an after-burning Avon engine, a pointy nose and a steeper windshield. In this aircraft Neville Duke broke the world airspeed record for jet-powered aircraft, attaining a speed of 727.63 miles per hour over Littlehampton, West Sussex. The first hunters to enter RAF service were the F-1 and the F-2, differentiated by the F-1 having the Avon engine and the F-2 having the Sapphire. They entered service in 1954, but both variants were short on fuel and had the gun issues mentioned previously. With gun firing and range issues, both the F-1 and F-2 were basically useless as weapons, though the RAF did the best to cover up at the time. The next versions of the Hunter to enter service were the F-4 and the F-5 in 1955, with the F-5 being powered by the Sapphire and being a couple of months earlier into service than the Avon-powered F-4. These aircraft had more fuel, a stronger wing and were always fitted with Sabrinas, unlike the F-1 and F-2 for which it was a retrofit. The F-5 was the first hunter type to see combat, taking part in the Suez Conflict, where two were destroyed by the EOKEA on the ground in Cyprus. 
By 1957 there were 19 RAF squadrons operating the Hunter and the F-6 was starting to arrive in service. This aircraft was more powerful, but this was causing a pitch-up issue which was solved by increasing the cord, the distance from front to back of the outer wing, giving a distinctive dog tooth. For the next five or six years the Hunter was the main RAF fighter, but the rapid improvement in technology was overtaking it. In 1963 the English Electric Lightning took over the Hunter's role as an air defense interceptor and the Hunter was relegated to ground attack duties. Around the time the F-6 entered service the Hunter T-7 also arrived with the RAF. This aircraft was a dual sea trainer based on the F-4. The fleet air arm had an equivalent aircraft in the T-8, which was fitted with an arrestor hook. The next Hunter to enter service after the Lightning removed it from its perch was the FGA-9 fighter ground attack. This aircraft had even stronger wings, provision for much more external fuel and increased oxygen supply. It was also fitted with the T-7's brake parachute. The FGA-9 entered service in 1960 and soon equipped a number of squadrons. It saw action in attacks against dissident tribes and rebels in Aden, and attacks against Indonesian terrorists in Borneo. After the FGA-9 the Hunter also had the FR-10s and the PR-11s plus the GA-11, modified from the PR-11s for the fleet air arm. One of the last versions of the Hunter used by the UK was the fleet air arms THM. This aircraft was modified with the radar from the Sea Harrier and was used to train pilots in its use before putting them in the single-seat fighter. I personally think this is one of the most attractive versions of the Hunter in one of its most attractive color schemes. There was also a single T-12 produced which was to be a trainer for the TSR-2 supersonic bomber when that entered service with the RAF, however when the program was cancelled only a single aircraft was made which was used for research into fly-by-wire technology.